With the use of 3D animation and Animix Dave, I'll walk you through the process of turning a basic, boring animation into an amazing AI rendering. The technique includes a 3D process, a face replacement using the IP adapter, and the addition of Animix Dave all within Comfy UI. Throughout the process, I'll also share some tips on how to avoid some common mistakes that I have experienced. To get started, I'll go to Maximo and download a free animation character rig. In here, I'll go to the Animations tab. So I'll search for Basketball. And once I click on it, this will be loaded. There are still some extra characters here to adjust the character to what you may prefer. Regarding the speed, position, and a few more other extra details. Once I'm happy with the settings, I'll click Download. I'll save the file format as FBX, change the frame rate to 24, download once again, and save the animation. Next, I'll be using a 3D application to change the FBX file. You can use any 3D software you are also familiar with. So inside Cinema 4D, I'll import the FBX file we just downloaded. I'll keep everything at default and click OK. We can see we have the character with no issues and everything is just in position and rigged for us from Maximum. I'll add a few more details to make this more creative. So since he is bouncing a ball, I would also like to add a basketball. I'll select a basketball from the free assets. Make sure the ball is in the right position under his right arm since we are working in a 3D environment. I'll change the workspace to Animex to add an animation to the basketball. I'll switch to use the front view. I'll set up keyframes to animate the ball bouncing to match up to the same movement of the original animation. I'll use a 4 frame interval between the keyframes to position the ball hitting the floor and bouncing up. So we should have something like this. I'll speed up the process to add some rotation keyframes as well for the ball rotating. Okay, so I like this and this is all looking good from the front view. Before we export this to Comfy UI, I'll create a fake environment for the character. I'll be using box shapes to represent buildings to create a street basketball scene. Don't be too particular about the details for now. Once we are back inside Comfy UI, Animate Steve will handle all of this with the AI rendering process. Additionally, I would like to add a camera animation to this since I'll be changing the focal length of the camera properties just to create a simple zoom in and zoom out animation. Bring my timeline uh, to the middle. I'll also drag this keyframe all the way to the end. I'll change the focal length and keyframe the focal length also at the end. So the results will be similar to having a loop animation of the character and also the camera movements. In the top icons, I'll click to add an infinite light to the scene. I'll also rotate this to make sure everything is visible and in a good position. I'll move on to the render settings. I'll change this to 800 by 800. I'll skip the rendering process to see the results from everything we have so far from the animation. So this displays a loop animation of a character bouncing the basketball in a street scene with buildings and palm trees. From our 3D animations, you can use any software to resize the video. I have resized the video here to 512 by 512. I'll duplicate the video to have a five second loop animation. And once this is all done, I'll render everything into a five second animation. Inside Comfy UI, I have explained how to build this workflow by using Animex Diff and the LCM nodes in my previous videos. I would also include the link now right above. So we will be modifying this workflow with Control Nets to use our 3D animation workflow which we created. I'll move up here to build a workflow for Control Net. For the first node, I'll right click to add node, go to the advanced control net and apply advanced control net node. I'll also search for depth and select the depth anything processor. I'll connect this into the apply advanced control net. So I'll drag out here to select the control net loader. I'll be using the depth model to match up to the processor. Next, I'll be using the video combine node to have a preview of what control net is doing. So I'll change the frame rate to 30 frames and also change the file path as well. Next, I'll create a group and rename this to Control Net and put all of this together. So I'll edit the colors to have this as green. Select all the nodes here and change all of this to brown. So I'll search for the Load Video node to import the 3D animation. I'll click to load up our 3D animation which we rendered earlier. Connect this into the processor of the Control Net uh, workflow. I'll change the load cap to 20 to have a quick and short preview. I'll queue prompts from here and let's see the results we get from Control Nets as a preview. All right, so this looks great from the 3D animation and also the results from Control Net. Uh, from here, I'll zoom out and let's go ahead to combine this workflow to animate the. Uh, I'll just tidy up a bit and move things to the right. 
I'm first going to disconnect animate state from the sampler node into control net advanced. Disconnect the positive to send into the advanced control net node. Also, we'll do the same for the negative prompt as well. Next, everything goes back into the sampler custom node from the advanced control net node. We need a prompt in the positive node and I have already modified the prompt. So our prompt will be a 2D vector illustration of Michael Jordan in the streets of Miami. I would also include a negative prompt and from here I'm going to hit Q prompt to see our first generation. Alright, so just by inputting a 3D animation with no textures, we have this AI rendering from Animate Stiff without even doing anything. We have our own camera animation inside of Animate Stiff. Control net might be too strong, so I'll move on to lower this a bit. Uh, for the strength, I'll bring this down to 0.7 and also the end percent to 0.7. So in our prompt, we also included Michael Jordan with some weights. Let's see if the IP adapter can help with that. I'll move down here to build a workflow for the IP adapter. I'll right click to add a node IP adapter and use the IP adapter advanced node. I'll right click again to add a node IP adapter and use the unified load node. Connect the unified loader into the IP adapter advanced. Since we are going for a face replacement, I'll use the model for a full face SD 1.5 only. Next, I'll search to add a load image node. So from here, I'll load the face image I want to use to be replaced. Search for the prep image clip vision node, which is going to help me to just position this in the center. And I'll also change this to 0.5. Next, I'll connect this to the IP adapter advanced node. I will drag out to use the preview node to also see the results from the IP adapter. I would switch from linear to ease out inside the advanced node. All right, so everything came out correctly. I'll rename this to face and group all of this together. So let's see the outcome by combining uh, the IP adapter workflow to the workflow we have so far, which is very easy. To do this, I'm going to disconnect Animate Stiff from the control net node, which now goes into the IP adapter unified loader. I'll send the IP adapter advanced node into the control net advanced node. And that's all we need to do. In here, I've also increased the latent image size to 960 by 960 and I'm still keeping the one by one aspect ratio. And I'll kill prompt to see our results by including IP adapter for the face. This is extremely impressive by including the IP adapter and this is almost closer to Michael Jordan. This is all not looking perfect but for now this is giving us a great result by what we have so far. Exporting the 3D character with no background only allows control net to influence the character so and that was my reason for creating a fake environment to get more details inside of Animate Stiff. So I hope you guys can come up with some creative ideas and apply this method or technique and don't forget to smash the thumbs up if you made it here. Additionally you can watch this simple video to video tutorial that explains how to modify any regular video you may have.